Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to Dev channel. So in this episode, we are going to make together a new year countdown timer using JavaScript for behavior. And we are going to also use some basic HTML and CSS to create this landing page. This is a dynamic page. If you open this page next year, it will show a countdown to 2022. If you're new here, subscribe and click the little bell somewhere down below so you don't miss our weekly videos. Let's have fun. All right, start you really from the beginning, from the scratch, okay? We have open our VS Code. Let's open our folder. And let's start by creating our standard three files, okay? The first one, index.html. is going to be the markup. Then we have style.css. And the last one, app.js, is going to be our JavaScript file, okay? The main focus is going to be JavaScript, but let's start with our markup, all right? Uh, here, on the title, let's say countdown timer, JavaScript, all right? Next, let's move to our link that's going to connect our CSS to our markup. And down below here, close to the body, let's have our script app.js. In the body here, we're going to have a h1 say happy new year, okay? This is going to be outside of our div. And then we're going to have our main div that's going to have an ID and also a class of countdown. The markup here is quite simple. It's basically four divs, one for days, another one for hours, and so on. Okay. So let's create this first one. And uh, it's going to have a H2. This one is going to be hours. Okay. And uh, is small, say days. All right. All right, let's open and put them side by side. Let's see what we have so far, okay? As you can see, we have just the first div, the new year countdown. All we have to do now is duplicate this, okay? And make a few changes. Let me just separate this one so you can see it better. This one is gonna be for the hours, okay? Let's change it down here too minutes all right and the last one here is going to be for the seconds all right let me type here seconds on the small we are now at the css where a part of the magic happens okay we are going to use the poppins so i'm going to grab that from google fonts okay i'll leave the link down below in the video description all right and next, we are going to use some type of CSS reset, okay? We're going to set everything here to body box. Now let's start with the body, okay? We are going to start by adding a background for a remote URL, okay, for a splash. And we're going to add a couple of properties, okay? Repeat, no repeat. Also cover. Okay, you can see that it's just where we have the, our content. And background position, we want center, center, in the X and Y axis, okay? We want this to cover the full page, so it's going to be 100 and VH, all right? And now we're going to use that font that we import from Google Fonts, okay? Font family is going to be Poppins and as a fallback, some self, if something goes wrong, all right? We are gonna also display this as flex, okay? But we don't want they horizontally, so we're gonna change that to column. Next step here is something that a lot of people like it and love it, is align everything in the middle. So align the item center. Just like content is also center, and text align also in the center 
let's get rid of any type of margin with margin zero, all right? And the overflow here is gonna be hidden. Now I will grab the H1 and let's make it really big, okay? This one, the new year countdown, all right? Font weight is gonna be normal, okay? The, the font size is gonna be huge, it's gonna be 60 pixels, okay? And let's also give it a little bit of margin, okay? It's gonna be minus 150, zero and 40 pixels. Right now the countdown is column as you can see and I want to change that, okay? So the display is going to be flex, we're going to lay the out horizontally and I want to make them bigger with transform scale 2. Now we are going to grab the time and the layout here is going to be flex. I don't want it to be side by side, okay? So let's change the direction to column and go ahead and align items as center and also just find content center and let's also add a margin of 15 pixels, okay? They are two stuck together. So let me add the margin, okay, it starts to look nice. Now let's deal with the numbers, okay? It's gonna be the time and H2. And the first thing here, let's make it, uh, it bold, okay? The font weight bold. The font size here is gonna be 36 pixels, much bigger. I want a line height of one. And let's also give it some margin, okay? Break the close to the unit values, okay? I created this landing page, I came across, it happens all the time when you have devs with this problem. It's good on the big screen, but not so well on the small ones. So we're gonna fix that using medias, okay? Max with 500 pixels. And what is gonna happen when we have this? We're gonna make a few changes, okay? The first one, we're gonna change the H1, it's too big right now we change the font size to 45 pixels, okay? But there is more. Now we grab the time and give it a margin of just five pixels. And now get the time, H2, font size 12 pixels, all right? Now we grab the time, the small, and make the font size of 10 pixels. And if you give it a try, you can see that it's much better even in a small screen, okay? Our main focus is JavaScript, but you're always learning something new. As I told you in the beginning, those numbers are gonna be outpopulated using JavaScript. So for now, we're gonna delete those ones because we are about to go into JavaScript. We have our landing page styled, so now we need to make it come alive. So the first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna grab in the DOM elements, I mean the days, hours, minutes, and seconds, okay? And let's bring it in in our JavaScript, okay? I'm just type const here. All right, and let's say dot query select all. I could do also selecting by ID, but we're gonna get the same results. So in here, we grab the days, hours, the minutes, and the last one, the seconds, okay? So it's all in. We need two things, current year and second, the year we are counted to, okay? Let's create this one, because new year date, 
and let's uh, hard code the date okay the January 1st and the year 221 the hour is gonna be zero zero but this way you always have to hard code okay so the idea here is to make it dynamic so the next year you check here and you're gonna see the 2022 so let's grab the year okay let's get grab the date the today's date new date and from this one let's use a method and let's get from here just the year the full year okay and now we have the full year in this case is 2021 next year is going to be 2022 let's have a back stick here so you can use expression and instead of this hard code 2021 we are going to use our current year okay plus one okay let's have a dollar sign here and that's it The next thing I'm gonna do is create a function, okay? Let me call this countdown, countdown timer, okay? And in this function here, countdown timer, we are gonna make all the calculations, okay? First of all, let's go ahead and get the current time. I'm gonna do that by assigning it to new date, okay? So we have the current time. Actually, it's quite simple. What we want here is the difference between the new year or the date we are count down to, okay? This one. And we're gonna subtract to the current date that today's date okay so there is nothing complicated here we are gonna go from the current date to the new year date okay let me copy this one and actually let me invoke this function okay later on i'm gonna set an interval and we'll be calling that every second let me console.log this difference here and let's have our dev tools and let me save here and as you can see we have the milliseconds from today until the new year okay you get those in milliseconds all right and now we'll calculate days hours minutes and seconds okay Let's start by const d for days, okay? And let's have the math flaw to round the numbers. And let's divide the difference by 1000. So we're gonna have the seconds, okay? Let me console.log that one. And you have those seconds until the next year. So let's double check this one to be sure, okay? Let me copy this one and go to Google. And let's go for seconds to days, 8.65 days. So that's right, okay? But we don't want the, the seconds, we want the days. If you divide this one by 60, we have the those minutes until the next year. Let me check it again. Let's copy this one and go from to Google. And let's check from minutes to days. And we have this 8.65 days, okay? And if again we divide this one, guess what we have? We're gonna have the hours. Let me divide by 60. We have 207 hours. So let's go to the Google again and recheck this. Let's go hours to days and 207 days hours is going to be eight days but we want not hours but days so i'm going to divide that one by 24. if i divide that by 24 
now I have eight days until the next year, all right? So now we want the minutes, okay? So let's change this to, to H and continue using math in floor. Let's just copy this one. And let's take out this 24 because now we want the hours, okay? If you do this and you check, you see that something's wrong. Let me show you. H, 207 hours, but you have to take in consideration that a couple of hours has passed already, okay? So you have to have the remainder of 24. And you see now we have a different number, we have 50 hours, okay? And now we want to grab the means, okay? So let's copy this one and paste down here. Change the H to M. Let's get rid of this 60 here, okay? So you have the mirrors and the reminder this time is going to be 6 because a couple of mirrors has passed the red. Let me show to you, console.logm, we have 27, okay, let me show you that, that now it's 832, it's, it's right, okay? And let's move to the next one, okay? Now we are going to have the seconds, seconds is going to be quite simple, okay? As you know, we have those one in milliseconds, so what I have to do is divide the milliseconds by 1000 and we have the seconds and the reminder of 60. And it changes one to the seconds and you have the four. If you update, you see that it's changed. We really have the seconds in here, okay? And now let's delete this one. And let's use this set interval because we want this function to run every second, okay? So let's set interval and let's have the name of the function that we want to run and the time. The time is going to be 1000 milliseconds. That's the same as one second, okay? And as you can see on the left, it's changed already. See the seconds are running. So far, so good. Those number above, they, they give us what we, we need to input the DOM elements, okay? We don't care about the logs. So let's take days, set in HTML to D, and we have the, the number 8 in our DOM. Now let's do the same to the hours. Hours set in HTML, all right? Let's set to M means, but there's a problem here. We don't want to see three when see zero three, okay? So let's have a special. If M is less than 10, then we're gonna have zero plus minutes. Otherwise, you have just the minutes, okay? Let me save this and you have zero two. I'm just Copy this and do the same here for the. Let me see here, we, we are in the mirrors. Now, here is the hours, okay? Hours. Let me change M to H, all right? And let's do the same for the mirrors, okay? Let me type mirrors. All right, we have zero, 01 instead of one, okay? Let me just copy this and do the same for the seconds. Seconds. And S here, S, S, and we have our countdown using JavaScript.